Hi. Good morning. Today is the regular meeting of the New Canaan Board of Selectmen. It's 831. Um, in front of you, you have today's agenda. I have a few edits that I'd like to make. Um, the first being to add, um, and we could, I guess we could do it uh, item right after public comments, the planning and zoning purchase order. Um, they need to increase a uh, request for um, a purchase order for $11,000 for SLR consultants um, to uh, for preparation of the plan of conservation and development. So that's the first one. Uh, could I get a motion to add that item to Someone. the second? And then the second item is to delete item number 26, the Hoffman report. Um, the woman who was going to be presenting today had a family emergency. So she will be coming to our next meeting to do the report. And then could I get a motion so to moved. remove that? Second. Okay. And then uh, finally item 21 on the agenda. Uh, we need to just change the language in the, in the item to um, it says uh, it's a tree emergency tree work and it's, to approve a purchase order. And we're gonna change the language to say not to exceed $70,000 each. So not to exceed, could I get a motion to uh, amend the agenda for that item? So moved. Second. Okay, uh, and it's unanimous. All right, thank you very much. And then can I get a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. It's unanimous, thank you. Okay. So make sure I don't forget anything. Just keep me in order. Um, so then also if I could get um, a motion to approve the minutes from our regular meeting held on July 9th. So moved. Second. It's unanimous, thank you. Public comments. Members of the public are welcome to provide comments to the Board of Selectmen on agenda topics scheduled for review and or vote. Comments submitted electronically should be sent to the following email address, bosdistribution at newcanonct.gov. Anyone wishing to make any comments? No one on Zoom. Okay, thank you. All right, so we will move on to the SLL, SLR purchase order. Um, Sarah Carey. Good morning. This is a request just for um, the PO for fiscal year 25 to finish out the balance of the contract with SLR for the POCD. Okay. So it's not an increase in the contract, it's just finishing Correct. it. We've Correct. already approved it, it's, on, it's already been part of the budget, okay? Yes. Just wrap it over fiscal year, right? right. Please. Okay. And they've been doing a great job so far. Yes, they've been wonderful. The product's amazing, so. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. All right. All right. If if uh, I could get a motion to approve a request from the Planning and Zoning per, uh, Department to increase an already approved purchase order in the amount of $11,000 for SLR consultants, which includes the preparation of the plan of conservation and development. So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next item is the YMCA, YMCA American Rescue Plan Act ARPA subgrant agreement. Um, Anne or... Uh, Russ or Margaret? Yes, hi, I'm here as well. Margaret Riley, the executive director okay. of the, the YMCA. Okay, thank you. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Hi. Uh, oh, now I can start my video. Thanks. Okay. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Margaret. Yeah, sure. Good morning. So I can provide some quick background if it's helpful. That would be great. Thanks, Margaret. Okay, sorry. Um, in, in 2022, it was September 2022 when the Board of Finance um, approved the town's allocation of $500,000 in ORPA funds uh, to the YMCA. The funds support an energy and sustainability project at the Y. We will install a CHP generator that the Y will use full time to create its own electricity and reduce our dependence on the grid. Um, and then during times of power outages, the CHP unit will function as an emergency generator so that the Y can serve as the town's emergency shelter. The total project cost is about $2.2 million. The allocation of ARPA funds was $500,000. 
um, the your your predecessor board of selectmen um, approved the two contracts that are before you. But at the time, we knew that certain <clears throat> minor revisions were going to be necessary, and certain exhibits were, remained outstanding that had to be attached. Um, so we're here today to have you consider those two contracts. Um, the first is for the subgrant of the ORPA funds to formalize that grant, and the second um, sets out the uh, WISE agreement to allow the town to utilize the Y facility as an emergency shelter. Um, we have signed contracts for the CHP um, for the purchase and installation and design of the CHP unit. We signed them in May. Um, to date, the YMCA has invested approximately $250,000 in the project already. Um, so that's where it stands now. The project is estimated to be completed uh, first quarter 2025. Um, so I think um, other than that, that's um, where we are. Doug, you can add any comments if you think um, appropriate, but I think we're otherwise in agreement on the terms of the contracts and they're ready for your consideration. I have a question. Is there any um, uh, schedule of whose money is spent when in terms of, uh, are we spending a dollar to dollar with why the ARP money or is it just going into the, the fund? Um, and I'm just curious. So. Sure. So, so the project is um, over two million dollars. The ARPA funds are five hundred. So, um, no, it's there. There has not been a discussion as to whether the ARPA funds um, need to be spent first or not. But um, there are auditing considerations um, within the subgrant agreement, so that the town has the right to come to the Y at any point in time to see that the funds are in fact allocated toward this project. And it in. The contracts, I mean, the cost is already set, you know what it's going to be, and so that's all lined up. So there's there's no uncertainty in any of this in terms of no. that. No, Great. no, no. I mean, I was on the Board of Finance when this went through, and it, it's it's a terrific, it's a terrific joint use by the town, because we really do need a place for people, and it was really the only the location that made sense, and then the idea that it would help in the energy um, Sufficiency, uh, self sufficiency of the Y. It's kind of a really, I think it was really appropriate use of ARPA funds. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And any other questions? Can you just review the, you said the selectmen, prior board of selectmen approved this, and then there was amendments made. The amendments that were made, can you just review those real quick? Sure. So they, they really were sort of minor revisions. Um, the the emergency fill facility, no, I'm sorry, the um, sub grant agreement, I believe, was, is, so it's largely based on federal regulations, um, but it was previously phrased, I, I think perhaps for a different um, allocation that the town made and phrased more as a program um, that the funds were going to support as opposed to a project. Um, therefore, it had certain burdens like, um, you know, every year you need to report how many participants are, are taking part in the program, things along those lines, that because the Y is doing a project rather than a program, would have been impossible for us to fulfill. So working with Doug Lamont, Lamonte, we um, revised, made those re minor revisions to the contract. Also, there were some exhibits that needed to be finalized. Um, there's an exhibit to the emergency facility use agreement um, that sets forth the WISE facility rules. Um, so we've now supplied that. Um, we needed to um, finalize and approve and confirm Exhibit A to that same agreement, um, which sets forth the spaces within the YMCA that the town can utilize. That was um, pending our understanding of what areas of the Y the CHP would be able to um, electrify, if you will, or power um, during power outages. So now that our system is further in design development, we're able to confirm that, yes, we're able to We'll be able to have power in the gymnasium and the lobby and the elevators and all of the spaces that Russ Kimes has ev has evaluated uh, the town to need during a power outage. Um, certainly, showers and, and locker rooms um, included as well. Thanks, Margaret. The only other question I had is, you know, and this isn't for this group, but I'd like to see at some point a report back on the efficiency and savings of CHP. You know, it, we've right done the right. Yeah. So we we've we've gone into this technology, but we really don't know, and we've invested a lot of money in it, but we really don't know what the payback is and what the savings is. So I'd like to, at some point I'd like to see that. Uh, so we'll have to get because it's funny that you said that because I was just sitting with uh, Joe Zagorinsky last week mm -hmm. on this very 
topic. And so um, <clears throat> there's, um, you know, there was an outside consultant retained and um, yeah. he's not really interested in providing reporting without extra compensation. Okay. So um, yeah, it's so, but Joe's going back and reviewing and we've been looking at it. I think the payback period is gonna be longer than anticipated. Um, I think, so, you know, we will look at that. Um, I think, you know, I think there was a thought that it would be probably like a six year payback. I think we're looking at more like a 10 year payback or longer. And then I, I, I did ask, you know, sort of um, what the, um, you know, the useful life is of mm -hmm. those units. Cause you know, obviously yep. if you're not getting paid back and you have to replace, but it sounds like the, the way the program works and we can, you know, maybe we should bring uh, Tucker, maybe we should bring Joe here next meeting to kind of talk about it because I think that's probably the best way to do that without having to bring in our outside consultant because um, he's the most familiar with with this program, but um, of anybody on, on town hall. And um, it, it sounds like they will replace you, you know, um, units uh, without having to go back into uh, another big investment. So, um, but let's let's do that for next next uh, meeting because I've been asking about yeah. it as well so but there's a there's a secondary thing on this certainly mm -hmm. the payback right and um, but there is the idea of being able to stand alone and function and have less grid right. reliance okay. and it's kind of hard to put a price on that yep. mm -hmm. um, and there is nothing harder than projecting energy costs going mm -hmm. forward I mean you go with an assumption yep. that fuel is going to this natural gas and it always always mm -hmm. that's true because our, our gas prices are much higher now than when they, it, they it's entered into the agreement yeah i mean people uh, like, make a so, lot of money trading on this well, you know, my point the solar panel for instance that we put on we actually monitor that we know exactly what we're we're getting right. back from right that. there's i just want to know is there a, the, joe can answer this yeah. i don't want to go into into the weeds yeah. on this but is that a measurable you know yeah i think there's some also because uh, joe has been working really hard to get some of because uh this isn't sort of his you know Alex. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. So he's trying to get more information, but as you might expect, this is also because people get paid for consulting on this. It's very difficult to get sort of. Yeah. Uh, you almost have to go back and recreate what yes. the assumptions were and go yes. forward with what yes. things are. Yeah. Yes. So, but, but, there, but there are two levels of it, right? Right. So, right. You know, potential savings, but also uh, independence and resiliency. Right. Right. But it, but it does, um, you, you know, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, for what we're doing with the why, I think it makes perfect sense. We need a, we need a, um, you know, an emergency sure. shelter yeah. that, you know, can, can provide energy. But um, I think, you know, if, if we were to look at this for other facilities, I think we do need to sort of look at the cost benefit and, yeah. and, um, you know, see if it really does make sense long-term for us. Um, it, this is kind of an aside, but I found it was interesting when I was going through, we went through the police building yeah. and, uh, you know, when you put in new systems, they're more efficient, mm -hmm. except what buildings are required to do has gone up. It, mm -hmm. I mean, I, mem I remember Tiger and Joe just saying, you know, we new buildings have different filtration systems than we used to. So it's even though you're more efficient, you may, in fact, see your energy uses go up, but you're providing expanded HVAC and air quality. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that that's one of those kind of, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a you're lot not of... just open your windows, you're keeping right. everything. Right, yep. right. Um, okay, any other questions? I have just a small question, and Doug, mm -hmm. I think you could probably answer this for me. Um, I just, I, I'm sure this is standard la language, but um, under number 12, the waiver, um, it just says, you know, complete indemnification. Is that just typical language? Of course it says, uh, you know, we waive everything except for something's egregious. Is that just typical language that you that is put in one of these contracts? I'm Doug Lamonte from uh, Birch and Moses, and uh, thank you for your question. I assume you are referring to the emergency facility use agreement. Yes, so we're not exactly. quite there. Yeah, we're, oh, sorry. We're, we're, <laughs> we're really talking about the ARPA grant yeah. right now. Sorry, okay. we hold that for a That's okay. I had both of them on my desk, so I'm yep. ready. Yep, yep. Let's, let's uh, I'll, deal I'll with that. I'll be ready for that and the next item. Thank you. Okay, sir. No, no worries. It's just together. Sorry. No, no, I know. Um, any okay. other questions about the ARPA subgrant? No, we've. I mean, as far as the ARPA goes, it's, yeah, we've we've 
definitely done our due diligence on that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if I could get a uh, motion to approve a request of an ARPA subgrant agreement between the YMCA and the town of New Canaan to provide funding for a combined heat and power project at the YMCA in order to provide emergency shelter services. So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. now moving on to the Real emergency quick, use. So Margaret, when you guys have this up and running, to the extent you're able to um, analyze your energy costs before and after, and if you share that with us, that kind of speaks to yeah. what Steve was talking about. And they're using a different consultant then, so probably. True. Or, or you'll just have the input, right? You know, you'll have... Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, so, and it actually part of our contract um, with a company that's providing the CHP unit is that they um, come back and do that type of study for us, give us those metrics to see um, what level of efficiency um, and whether um, we are in fact uh, appreciating the savings um, and, and reduced consumption that we hope to. Thanks, Margaret. That'd be very helpful for the rest of our town buildings if we ever decide to do additional CHP. So very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Do we do you, you want to ask Doug about sure. that? So five. Did, did you have another question about the contract, uh, Amy? No, no, that was just okay. All right. Um, so the only the only question I had in that contract, there's one we we mentioned residents and and spaces, and there was one. It was early on in the uh, document that where it says it doesn't say resident. I'm curious as we go through this, and I just want to be clear. Obviously, we want to if there's an emergency, we're going to help anybody that needs help. Right? I would assume Russ, but residents would take priority. I would think like if you reach maximum capacity at this shelter and you have to decide between a resident and non-resident. I, I just don't, I want to make sure that we're serving the residents uh, first. I, I, know that's, I know that's really hard to say, but you know, it's, it's the taxpayers' money that are putting this together. So. No, agreed. And there, uh, and I don't, as I'm not an expert in this domain with from the legal side of it, uh, it, it gets sticky about when you open a shelter Who's, who is yeah. eligible or not. However, obviously any communications about sheltering the opening of this facility and everything else would be done to our residents um, explicitly. Um, not a broader remit, obviously. Um, but that said, there is, it, it is, you, it, you have to navigate it carefully yes. whenever opening a facility, which is why it is a, really it's a only in true emergent situations, right? It's not something we would open on smaller scale events where possibly we could work to do a smaller facility or maybe help find them, uh, find them another location to go, or maybe use something smaller like Lapham just for an overnight, right? As opposed to this, which is much more comprehensive because it has showers and everything else that, uh, the, the, for example, Lapham does not, which we've used in the past. I mean, the, tr the truth of it is if we had a large scale emergency, we're probably gonna have to go open up another facility anyway. And it's, we would just serve whoever needs help, I would think. Yeah, it, it comes down, it comes down to limitation on equipment um, between what we have in the basement of SACS and what we have as a, in a trailer that we are custodians for, for the state, we have call it 40 cots in the trailer and then in the basement of SACS, there's another hundred plus. Um, but the problem becomes, it's not space. If we use the YMCA, based on the guidelines from the Red Cross and others, it has a ton of room. We run out of equipment first, um, but thankfully, knock on wood, we've, with Sandy and Irene and those others, we have only seen small usage of these kind of facilities and obviously partner with um, Health and Human, Ser Human Services in particular to help people navigate this, uh, whatever the disaster is to find the long-term solution. You always open, the rule is you always open a shelter and post the date you're closing it the moment you open it. <laughs> Uh, to encourage people to continue to move. So that also we're not tying up the YMCA will post disaster. What was that? What's the uh, largest number of people we've actually had to shelter overnight? Uh, I believe it was in San Diego. It was before my time as EMD, but I remember in the number of 10 ish was the most uh, in my time. I think of everything we've had, we've only had two or three and we've ended up to just putting people in a hotel for a night and then they figured it out the next day. We're very fortunate in this town that a lot of people have generators, which is fantastic. Uh, and then they also have plans or friends and relatives that they can go and stay with. So it, generally speaking, thankfully, it is something that has not been historically leveraged heavily, but it is something we are absolutely have to have the capability to do, heaven forbid. I mean, in reality, if there was a true, really catastrophic emergency, 
if you ran out of cots and people had to make two, you would. We'll figure it out. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Right? We'll figure it out, and we partner with our regional partners, right? That's why we're very fortunate to have all the MDs down here. We work together, and we always are in communication with each other. They they have resources; they can bring them to us, and and I think that's a, a great capability um, and partnership. So, uh, yeah, I, it is the the reality is an emergency means you are going to be strapped for equipment, resources, and personnel by the nature of it. Yeah, and where we've really, the wise really in the past helped out major power outages, people having access to showers and, mm -hmm. and you know, you're not staying there right. using their electricity and water. And I can't thank Margaret and the YMCA for their willingness to participate like this, to formalize what they've always been willing to do, especially since the world has changed, right? Using schools is not an option because there's a potential, you, you know, maybe they want to reopen because there's enough people who have power back, but the small subset doesn't, and you don't want to mix those populations. So a, a tremendous thank you to the YMCA and their team for their willingness to partner on this. No, it's absolutely our pleasure to do it. We're here to serve this community. So, and this is the perfect way for us to do it. So we're really pleased. Thank you, Margaret. And Russ, um, all right. So if I could get a motion to approve or request. I, can I just oh, ask, Doug, sure. so Doug, that waiver language is just typical language in one of these agreements. Under 12. Yeah. 12. Yeah. Well, I would respond to that question this way. Uh, paragraphs 10, 11, and 12 really boil down to the concept, which in my opinion is fair and reasonable, that if someone is hurt or suffers a personal injury or uh, some property is stolen, uh, personal property, the town agrees to hold the YMC harmless, not to sue the YMCA, not to bring the Y into YMCA into a lawsuit that the town may be named in. Um, and I believe that's fair and reasonable because it's the town that is, uh, it's the YMCA rather, that is accommodating the, the needs of the town. And so, but for the town's uh, use of the facility, the YMCA would not have been exposed to that risk or liability. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Okay. If not, if I could get a motion to approve the request for a facility use agreement between the town of New Canaan and the YMCA in order for the YMCA to serve as an emergency shelter. So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thanks, Russ. Margaret, thank you all. Please, Margaret, please thank the board for us as well. Really, no, really I will. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. okay. Moving on to New Canaan Police Department purchase orders. In the Yes. Uh, yeah. Morning. So we're just asking to add 3000 to our open PO for Gauls uniforms, close out 2024 invoices, and 1000 to the open PO we have for New England uniform for our 2024 invoices for officers uniforms. Okay. Any questions? These are, are these are the new officers or? No, it's just every year we have a uniform allowance and it closes out in the end of June. And so these are just the remaining balances we got from them from last minute orders from officers. Okay. All right, no further questions. If I could get a motion to approve a request from the New Canaan Police Department for the following increases to FY24 previously approved purchase orders as follows. Galls, $3,000, New England uniform, $1,000. So moved. Same. It's unanimous, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, West, West Cog. Busy day for you, sir. So this request is to pay our annual dues as a member community for West Cog. Um, it's 12,000 and change this year. I think it went up about 500 from last year. It um, sits in the planning and zoning budget. Um, any specific questions about the annual fee? Just feedback on the benefits. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have to say, you know, um, I find it really valuable. I go once a month uh, to meetings with all the uh, both 
uh, Southern and Housatonic Valley for selectmen. And then there's representatives from um, the various departments in West Cog. Um, they've been really helpful in uh, identifying grant opportunities and um, just it, it's a great forum for for selectmen to get together and understand what other communities are uh, doing. And um, so I've, I've found it useful. And we have access to all of their research and, yep. you know, they they're very helpful for planning purposes. They do all of our regional planning. They have their own POCD. They do transportation planning, hazard mitigation planning. Um, so they're a really great resource. Francis, their director, is really helpful, especially during the legislative sessions for um, housing bills and whatnot. So I really enjoy their expertise. Right. How many towns are involved in West Coast? It's about fourteen, I want to say. It's most of Fairfield County. And and you know goes all the way up to Herman, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, so it's very confusing when we're passing things because there's some things that are just for Southwestern and some for um, Housatonic Valley. So and yeah. then there's the whole cog, and it's just um, yeah, it's it's a great group. Good, it's group. And I would echo um, Francis's um, expertise and and the value he's added um, in in sort of helping the community. So definitely. Well, it sounds like we get a lot for the twelve thousand. Yes. Yes. Good. All right. Okay. So, if I could get a motion to approve a request from the town planner for West Cog annual dues in the amount of twelve thousand one hundred forty-nine dollars for the period July 1, 2024 through June thirty, twenty twenty-five. So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, one thing for the record, the uh, just the way this is divvied up between the groups is it's based on population too. So I know we didn't really re get into that, but th that's it was an interesting point. Uh, in the document, it's it's the memberships are a portion of the members, their share of the region's population and land area. So that's mm -hmm. our So Stanford and Danbury are going to get a lot bigger bill than right. we do. Right. And we'll get a bigger bill than Sherman. Yep. That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Marcy. Yeah, Marcy, right. go ahead. So I'm going to still say, like, I'm going to use the I'm new around here still. <laughs> <Excuse. definitely. laughs> I, <laughs> um, I am actually here for an approval for a PO. The, um, the lease was actually approved in April by this body. So I apologize. I asked Tucker for approval for the lease payment. And that's not actually what I'm looking for. Um, $12,000 for the monthly payments for the uh, St. Mark's Food Pantry rental based on our lease that was agreed on in April. And this is the same amount that we paid last year. So there, yep. there was no increase um, to the to the rent. And uh, I mean, it's a thousand dollars a month for one of the best things we do in town. I mean that's pretty that's a pretty easy one. Mm. And I believe it's paid for through donations, not our contribution as uh, taxpayers. I think that's mm. right. We talked about the journalist. The I, you know what I actually don't know okay, that I answer. Know I can get back true. to you. I, I do know that all true. our we got nods in the back row. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. okay. All right. All right. So, any other questions? No. Nope. All right. If I could get an approval of a request from Human Services Department for a food pantry lease in the amount of twelve thousand dollars for a term to expire December thirty one, twenty twenty five. So moved. Made payable to it's unanimous. Thanks, guys. Okay, Parks and Rec. John. I'm going to try to, I'm new here. So <laughs> six years. <laughs> Not going to work. <laughs> well, you came in shirt. It is. Cool. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> so, thank you. Okay, so the, the first two items are for chlorine, actually, for... Um, sodium hypochlorite, which is we all most of us think of as chlorine, but this um, the first one is thirty two hundred and sixty dollars for the Steve Banco pool. This is to finish out twenty four and the same thing for twelve hundred for Kiwanis. Of course, we inject chlorine into the water to make it clean very simply. Um, the third one, Amazon, not to exceed fourteen thousand dollars, goes into a lot of different accounts. Um, multiple ones in parks, recreation, Lapham, and self-sustaining. Just when we're purchasing different items, when we can save money, we'd like to. So that's why we need a purchase order for that. And I left it off the, the big list from two weeks ago. 
The chlorine is for last year. Right? For last year, okay. yes, to fin and Amazon's for 2025. So by last year on the chlorine, are you saying it was May and June, or are you saying it was those? That was the last two invoices in June. Got it. To cover that, yeah. Once a month, basically. We went a little bit high. Warm temperatures, we burn a little bit more chlorine. It's tough to exactly tell how much you're going to go through in a year. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So if I could get a motion to approve a request from the Parks and Recreation Department to increase two FY24 existing purchase orders <clears throat> and one FY25 blanket purchase order as follows. Benko pool for chlorine, $3,260 for FY24. Kiwanis chlorine for $1,200 for FY24. And Amazon not to exceed $14,000 for FY25. It's unanimous. Thank you. Apology, STEM, and STEAM, which adds arts into the programs of before and after school from your question last week. I was going to ask you, in terms of the pool, is the usage like off the charts this year? Not off the charts, but it has been very busy. Wow. And and bather load also increases how much chlorine we need to use, too. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> what, what an amazing asset for the town. Okay. That's for sure. It's going well. In all ages, like little kids, not little kids. Thank you. Where do you put yourself? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, but size-wise, maybe. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you, John. Uh, WPCF, Nick and Maria. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're here this morning to request approval of a contract with Institu Form Technologies LLC for $31,820 plus a 15% contingency of $4,773 for a total project cost of $36,593 for the relining of approximately 110 linear feet of 18 inch pipe at the outfall of the wastewater treatment facility. The funds for this relining services are a uh, appropriated in the present budget. The need for the relining was a result of findings from routine maintenance and CCTV work for our facility. Root penetration was observed along with two separate pipe materials due to the original 1960s construction and then the updated reconstruction in the 1990s. So the relining will eliminate root penetration and will also provide extra integrity to the outfall pipe and will basically maintain one type of pipe material. So we're requesting these funds. How long does the lining last? The lining will basically make it like a new pipe mm -hmm. on the inside. So we should anticipate another 50 years out of it. And it's a sleeve that actually just goes in It's there. a sleeve and then it gets cured with UV light. So it gets, mm -hmm. yeah. And we've used relining throughout different areas of town. This one's an 18 inch, just given the size of the outfall pipe. So what would create the need for the contingency? What, what kind of things would make it go Just over? For what I anticipate is access in that area. Because if you imagine we're at the outfall, um, ideally, we're not going to be using that, but we like Say to- Say the outfall is at the Pacific was in the river? Yes, that's a pipe leading our post generation to the river. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing the technology with a sleeve like this. Years ago, you would have to rip the whole thing out. It would have been a really Correct. expensive. And it's 110 linear feet, so it's not so long. Right. I walked it. Yes, you do. <laughs> Jim Himes. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Um, any other questions? No. Oh, sorry. Um, How long before completion? Is it pretty quick? Do you know what the schedule is for in situ form? I'm not sure. No, Pretty no, good. I know they're doing yeah. a lot of work in Norwalk right now. That's why they put a bit on. We can get you that information though. It's a, it's a flexible tube too, right? It's not like no, one, it's oh, a one solid, solid heart. Yeah, it's always. But going in, yeah. going in, you have the flexibility. But yes, as soon as the UVA. Yeah, wow. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right, if I no further questions, if I could get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works to enter into a contract with Institu Inst Form 
Technologies, LLC, in the amount of $31,820, plus a contingency of $4,773 for a total cost of $36,593 for services to reline approximately 110 feet of 18-inch pipe at the WPCF. So moved. Second. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And then the WPCF second item. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so approval to request the Department of Public Works to increase two POs for FY24 for USA Blue Book. <clears throat> one in the amount of nine hundred seventy dollars, and one uh, in the amount of one thousand six hundred dollars. Blue Book is a company where we buy all our lab supplies, equipment, and also uh, collection system stuff for the roads. Okay. All right, if there are no questions, if I could get a motion to a, recruit, a request from the Department of Public Works to increase two FY24 purchase orders as follows. USA Blue Book building supplies for $970 and USA Blue Book lab supplies for $1,600. So moved. Second. It's unanimous, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, 12, truck refurbishing. All right, good morning. Um, good morning. Thank you very much for the previous approvals. Uh, this is a request from the highway department to uh, refurbish two trucks, truck number 25 and truck number 63. Uh, both units will have their rear units inspected, sandblasted and repainted with any defective or failing parts removed and replaced. Uh, due to the nature of these, of their use of the trucks themselves, material hauling, winter operations, et cetera, all the units require periodic maintenance of this type to ensure their long-term viability and provide a substantial savings over purchasing a new truck. As you know, these trucks are anywhere from two hundred to two hundred and seventy thousand dollars a piece. So fifteen thousand dollars halfway through its useful life is a very good um, good use of funds. The truck refurbishing account that we've had for the past seven eight years has been uh, one of our best uh, unit uh, use of funds um, every year. So we'd ask uh, that each quote is in $15,000 um, for each unit. And then we added on a contingency of $3,000 or 10%. Main reason for that is that if they see a part that's defective, they'll replace the part that's not included in the $15,000, obviously, since they haven't taken the truck apart to see exactly what's going on. Um, if we don't need to use it, we won't use it. But uh, the overall total is $33,000 and we have funds available um, from fiscal 24 and fiscal 25 in our capital accounts. Tiger, how um, how old are these two vehicles, and how much longer with, with this improvements do we expect to keep them in service? Because I know you 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 keep your vehicles a long time. So. Right, each unit stays. We keep our units uh, fifteen to twenty years. I don't know the exact date on either of these, um, but this will allow us to continue for another seven to ten. Tiger Lou knows, so he can tell us. <laughs> How about Lou? Good morning. <laughs> um, 20, uh, unit 25 is a 2011 with 42,013 miles on it. And unit 63 is a 2015 with 20,400 miles on it. So and these are, just to be clear, these are the big trucks that we yes. see plowing yes. and doing everything around town. Yep. <clears throat> and most people with a car with 42,000 miles on it, they would say it's easy, low mileage, but a truck like this with 42,000 miles, that's it's that's a lot of hard miles so that's amazing these trucks do a lot of work yeah. so tiger these are steel bodies and they're just going to sandblast them and repaint them is that the idea uh yes they're stainless our bodies are stainless steel but then the undercarriage is what's being sandblasted they're removing the the body itself and then they'll get to the undercarriage and sandblast and paint it's you know one thing about our trucks is you never know how new or how old they are because they all look so nice and they're all you know they all look the same so this is part of making the fleet look uh good as and having the maintenance and the uh, durability and, and uh, long-term use so i i think it's great compared to just letting them you know the, the useful life of getting another three or four years out of these trucks is a big deal correct yes, like car guy yeah thank you absolutely you absolutely it's got to maintain them any other questions? All right, if not, if I could get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works to enter into two contracts with truck parts and sales of Connecticut for a combined total of $30,000 plus a contingency. I have a question, sorry, I'll finish the, I'll start where I ended. I won't reread that. Um, 
how many, um, you know, like vendors in uh, Connecticut do this kind of work? Uh, we typically uh, have been using, um, we use a different company. I think it was uh, something image. Fleet image. Fleet image. Uh, these these guys are fabricators. They actually are building a truck for us right now. Okay. And um, highly skilled. This is, I mean, this is going to be like, this is well worth it. You know, they're going to take some frame rails that have rust that, you know, they start to separate. Okay. That'll all come off. It'll be like, be like looking at a brand new truck for fifteen thousand yeah. dollars instead of two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. So I ended with it for a combined total of thirty thousand plus a contingency in the amount of three thousand for a total cost of thirty three thousand. The project entails the refurbishment of dump truck twenty five and sixty three. Hello. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, we don't get to see you guys very often. Introduce yourselves and tell yeah. us what you're doing. Oh, come on, before oh, right you go, now. before you go, where are you right going? now. <laughs> where are you going, Dan? And we'll keep you. Public works. Yes. The wee boys, highway department. It's a pleasure to meet you. We always we always talk about you guys during the snowstorms and say how great a job you guys are doing. Yeah. We never get to actually see you here. So. We, yeah. Well, we appreciate everything. Thank you. Yeah. Well, before you both leave, too, um, I think it was last week, I went down to the highway department when they didn't have, and there'll be another item, an emergency item later when there was no air conditioning and it was 90 some degrees outside. So, um, but you know, they were uh, part of Mose and Lou and Dan were all part of a group um, helping me understand sort of how we um, bid out uh, different pieces of equipment mm -hmm. and sort of understanding, you know, the process and what they go through. To, to, so I thank you both for all your help in doing that. And, you know, it's a little more complicated than maybe the people might like to to you know know about, but it's it's um it's important. There's a lot of expertise in that group um, as far as knowing who our vendors are in in the state and who's good to work with and who's not good to work with. And so I appreciate um, all that you guys you do. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Um, we have any ditch repair, Maria? I'll, I'll, I'll join Tiger right. on. <laughs> so this item, um, this was an offshoot of the Capo Field reconstruction. When we went to Inland Wetlands for our permit um, approval, our permit application and approval, uh, it was brought to our attention by an, a, an abutting neighbor of a concern of a ditch that's adjacent to um, the work at Capo, but not directly affected by Capo. We have a, a catch basin that gathers a, a substantial amount of water from the fields themselves, and it's in uh, disrepair. It's it's, uh, it's eroding. Um, it's approximately six feet deep, and um, we felt uh, Marie and I, and, as well as Kathy Holland, the wetlands director, and the commission, that it should be addressed by the town. McCord Engineering was the engineer of record for Capo Field. Uh, so it was only natural to have him continue his analysis of the of the watershed area and prepare a, a plan for this work. Um, so it's uh, the project entails a watershed study, drainage analysis, and design of a drainage ditch reinforcement for the ditch along the Lapham Community Center Access Road in Waveney Park. We're calling it from the Southern Catch Basin because that's um, as it relates to the Capo Field uh, project itself. We will be bringing a, a subsequent contract for wetland flagging and consultation for wetland plantings, things of that nature from William Kenny Associates. Right now it's being vetted by uh, Maria and Kathy Holland from Inland, uh, from Inland Wetlands, and we'll be bringing that uh, to the selectmen for approval. Um, but we wanna get McCord started and then he'll be working with uh, Bill Kenny um, going forward on this project. So Tiger, this this is town funds. This is not part of the uh, New Canaan Athletic Foundation funds. That's, um, that's correct. That we're, yeah, uh, and we have we have funds in this uh, this year's budget for drainage improvements. This falls underneath that. It's uh, the Capo Field um, is not necessarily affecting this catch basin. We are we're outlitting into a a different catch basin, uh, a northern a northerly catch basin, um, but. Since it was brought to our attention and the, and the resident um, 
feels that uh, this is affecting uh, his property and it is affecting the wetland itself due to erosion. We felt it was necessary to uh, repair this, uh, address this and repair this this ditch. I mean, do you have any idea how much it, the, the ditch repair might be once we do the engineering work? Not at present. The access, similar to what Maria was talking about for the wastewater plant, the access is very, very difficult uh, into this area. It's heavily wooded. It's the area that's just north of the pool of the of the pool parking lot. So as you're heading to Lapham, it's on your left hand side uh, along the embankment just north of uh, of the Banco pool. So the access itself is very difficult to uh, to get into and that that'll be one of the driving factors on cost as to whether or not we can get machinery in or whether it's going to have to be um, performed by hand. Is it is a resident? It's a residential property abutting it. Because I mean, if I'm across the street, I'm on 106. Across the street, right? That's right. Gonna... right. There, are, there are no residential properties on our side of the street right. in this area. It's all our land, but it does drain across the street and then down um, Old Stanford Road, and then to Jelleth Mill to get to uh, to get to the river. So the plan is to tie it into. Is there a pipe from? The Banco pool area, or are you tying it in there, or where? So the, the Banco pool area has its own separate detention system. Okay. So yeah, so this is not connected. Um, it is an existing outfall right now that has been brought to our attention for serious eroding. Okay. Um, so there's an opportunity for us to go in and stabilize and see down, just downstream of that outfall, if there's anything that we can do to also help improve the wetland in that area. And you mentioned Kathy Holland's already looking at it. Yeah. So. Okay. Yes. Good. We'll be hand in hand. All right. All right. If there are no further questions, if I could get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works to enter into a contract with McCord Engineering in the amount of $8,600 with additional meeting time of $1,400 for a total of $10,000. The project entails a watershed study, drainage analysis, design of drainage ditch reinforcement for a ditch along the Lapham Community Center access road. You know, I have one more question before we approve it. So with the additional meeting time, if there's not, um, you know, so I'm guessing this is like an hourly rate for coming to planning and zoning and inland wetlands uh, for That's McCord. Correct. So if That's they don't need that much time. Um, we won't spend it. Okay. Yeah, he, he built, he would bill us at that time. He built in uh, two meetings um, into his project cost already but um given the nature of the of the project itself in the area um i just wanted to be on the safe side and add some additional um meeting time for it oh so two meetings are in the 8600 two meetings are in the 8600 yeah with, that would be one with us and then one with inland wetlands but if they if the inland wetlands goes to a second meeting or a third meeting then that extra time you know i, I wanted to try to put some additional build some additional monies in so we wouldn't have that uh have to come back. If there are no further questions, if I could get a motion to approve a request from the department. Did I finish? I read that all. Never no, mind. So, 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 I'm like, um, so do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, signage. Tiger. Yeah. So, uh, this next is uh, um, an approval to purchase uh, a stat track e traffic data collector. Um, what we've been finding is that we've been putting out our speed sentry signs, and they've been excellent um, as far as giving us feedback, traffic counts, things of that nature. But it's also when it goes up, uh, it changes behavior. Um, so that what winds up happening is the, the complaints that times we're getting while we're trying to uh, go through traffic calming initiatives uh, with the residents is that, well, everyone's slowing down because they can see the unit. You know, the unit gives them feedback on their time uh, or their speed and they slow down. And even if the, we turn the unit off, it's still there and people feel that it's tracking them and they, and they, they slow down. There's a change in behavior. This unit, this stat track um, actually is a stealth unit. It's a it's placed on a on a post necessarily wouldn't um, even recognize what it was. It looks like a, just a battery box and then it collects all the data that we would need similar to what the uh, the speed sentry does, but it doesn't change behavior. So it helps us and our traffic consultants 
determine exactly the true nature uh, of the speeding problem, if there is a speeding problem at the time. And then that would help drive um, further study or further implementation. Uh, the company itself, All Traffic Solutions, they provide us our speed sentry data. Uh, the, the platform is all a uniform platform for the data management for the police department. And um, this purchase is on a source well contract and they've given us a discount because we're uh, we're, we're a good client. We have uh, several units of, of uh, the speed sentry itself. So the overall cost was $8,390 for two, uh, two solar powered units. Uh, they gave us an $876.76 discount for a total price of $7,513.24. And the funds are available in our fiscal 25 budget. So, Charger, is this this public works budget, not the police budget? We have a signage budget, that's correct, for, for, for mm -hmm. situations such as this. And is this something that can be moved around? So it yes, can just easily. So we use our own post, put it on a post, and then we can move it around. Or any existing posts. It can so, wait, so you can do it. At, we can't use a utility post, or can we? Uh, this is more like a street sign. It would fit Oh, okay. Better. So it's a yeah. narrow post. It's a narrow post. Yeah. yeah so so would you put it below the street, the stop sign or something? It could go below that, yes. Oh, sure. And, and Andrew, that, you know, it's not necessarily target. a stop sign and, because you would be people slowing down at the stop sign, but other signs, a curvature sign, a speed limit sign, other you know warning signs things of that nature or it could just go up on its own post most people would not be paying attention to it it's it's a very innocuous box very small innocuous box and uh it's a uh, it wouldn't change their behavior or slow their speed yeah it's small 10 by 7 and sometimes what we need is just data we don't need to use it as a traffic calming so in this sense it's actually it's a better deal because we're going to order two of these uh, and the speed sentry signs that display the speed, even like, as Tiger said, when they're off and they're just collecting data, it is altering behavior, plus they're more expensive. Those are uh, almost $6,000 a piece. So, th so this would help you when people say, oh, we need one of the uh, traffic calming signs. Sure. This would help you. Determine, if determine whether there is, yeah, especially, it, it would especially help uh, Tiger as far as using uh, the consultants and whether or not any engineering is actually going to be needed instead of just police enforcement or just the sentry signs that are going to display speed just to calm like a couple you know poor behaviors whereas if there's a long-term issue on a roadway as we've seen in town a few times uh, whether or not there's going to be any you know if we need to put a stop sign somewhere or another piece of engineering this will collect the actual data so that's going to be very helpful for us it's good How to have. How do you decide where they go up, how long they go up? I mean, who, who, where is that? Is that with public works as police in terms of how we're going to? It's a mix. Uh, Tiger and I are we're considered the traffic calming. Uh, we have meetings with each other and just kind of go over what, you know, complaints he's getting. He gets complaints. I get complaints. We meet together, decide where there are issues that really need the most immediate attention. Sometimes it's just, uh, you know, we post for our officers monthly locations where we're having the most speed complaints just to get officers out there and see if there's a problem and, you know, conduct some enforcement. Sometimes that makes the issue go away. People, you know, get wary of going down that road and speeding. Sometimes there's a, a longer term issue that we're going to need to address. Like, for example, Carter Street always been an issue people coming off 123 to get to silver mine and not come through town so there's some issues you know that they're always there the weed streets always a speeding problem so there's issues in town that we're, we're not going to be able to address with just enforcement so that you know speed sentry signs and collecting data is what we need and do you expect to move these or what are they up for two weeks somewhere or you get so the battery lasts, we have several that are battery operated. That's the speed sentry signs of what we have now. Those batteries we see, they don't last that long. Uh, and I think part of that is because they have to display the speed and it's using more battery power. So those only last, they last less than seven days. So I have someone going out uh, every Monday. Usually we try to get them out. Sometimes Monday doesn't work, but it, it, they last less than that. So I usually get the phone calls, the battery's dead. You've got to complete replace it. You know, it's not that simple. We have to have somebody that's assigned to that duty. So hopefully we're, we're hoping that when we get these up in places that since it's not just has a, a display to be used in draining the battery, that they're actually going to last longer. Hopefully two weeks would be possible. Great. And there's no, there's no license plate reading. There's no, no, this is all nope, totally number, separate from that program. Yeah, number of cars. Nope. One one benefit though, this does give you the size of the vehicle though. 
So you'll have a small, medium, and large. And that'll give us an idea if there's a truck oh, issue. Yeah. yeah. All right. And this is for two units? This is for two. Okay. Yes. I just, the uh, the agenda has <clears throat> one. So I just wanted yeah, to. Yeah, the memo read, the, as written uh, says to, uh, in the, okay, so the we'll middle just, of um, the paragraph says two, the two units. To say that. Okay, if okay. there are no further questions, if I could get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works and uh, and the New Canaan Police Department to enter into a contract with all traffic solutions in the amount of $7,513.24 for the purchase of two Star Trek E traffic data collectors. So moved. It's unanimous, thank you. Thank you. Okay, purchase orders, DPW. Uh, no, 15. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Yes, I, I already closed. <laughs> I'm going to refuse myself. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So uh, this next item, um, we uh, recently made a change to our building maintenance personnel to better utilize the individual skill sets of each member, which we're sharing between um, members from recreation parks over with town buildings. Uh, moving individuals around to uh, based upon their skill sets. We have some that are very, very skilled in carpentry and other uh, trades, and we'd like to um, kind of utilize that that asset. So we felt we needed a vehicle for this individual um, to assist with the daily maintenance and the upgrade operations of our buildings, be able to house their tools, house their equipment. They wouldn't have to be going back and forth to the shop um, to uh, gather equipment and, and tools, and that reduces our travel time between job sites and increases efficiency. And we were able to find um, this unit. It's a 2022 Chevy Express van 3500 with a cargo box body um, for this purpose. Uh, the vehicle is actually already outfitted inside with shelving, uh, which will work quite well for us. John, uh, went out and took a look at it. Bill took a look at it. Butch took a look at it. They all felt they were um, that it would serve our needs very, very well. Uh, given the fact that it's a, a used unit, but it only has approximately 450 miles on it, it's difficult to compare comparable models. But we went through a, a search and found at least five separate models, five separate offerings from other Chevy dealers uh, in the area, in, in the surrounding area, um, to determine whether or not this price of $54,413.95 was a good purchase for the town, um, was a bargain. Um, and the range of pricing there range, range from $57,990 all the way to $77,458. It should be noted that the MSRP for this purchase, this vehicle was 62,100. So we're seeing a substantial savings of about $8,000 for only 450 miles. Um, so we feel that um, this would be a very good purchase for us, it would increase our efficiency, help our individuals service uh, the town more effectively. And we'd like to go forward with this contract with Carl Chevrolet for 54,413.95. It should be noted as well that utilizing an in-town vendor helps us because if we have an issue for maintenance that needs to go back to the dealership for, in essence, we can do that all within um, within town very readily and very easily. We need to have two people, obviously, because you have to have one to drop off the van, one to pick the gentleman up who dropped it off, and then go back um, to uh, to their subsequent departments and their subsequent job sites. If we have a, we have a vendor that's out of town or further away, that travel distance increases and we're still having the two men while, while it might be a five minute trip to Carl Chevrolet, it could be 15, 20, 30, an hour there and back, not only to drop off the vehicle, but to pick up the vehicle. So there's a savings on that, on just interim maintenance by purchasing um, or utilizing an in-town vendor versus an out-of-town vendor. I don't know if you have any other questions. Can you remind me what we budgeted for this? I remember you guys talking about it. It makes a lot of sense. But I believe it was six. I believe it was sixty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, I should mention and, um, it's, in the, it's in the fiscal twenty-five budget. Sorry, thank you. And last week, uh, I went through with uh, one of the Carl uh, Chevrolet employees on the bid assist program, and we went through sort of how you, you know, you put in what you want. It 
tells you what kind of discounts you're um, eligible for. And then, and then they do it on a commercial level. And if it's, if it tends to be, and this might've been one of those that they could have compared to a, um, to a, like an individual contract, they can go and say, would it be better to buy it as an individual, you know, like, um, what do they call it? Like a retail purchase versus a commercial purchase. And, and they, they compare, could we get a better deal as a retail purchaser or a commercial purchaser? And so it, it's a pretty sophisticated program that GM has for all its um, dealers. And uh, so it was, it was interesting to go through the process. So I'm sure if anybody, if anybody wanted to do that, I'm sure Carl would have uh, their, their person go through that with you. Cause it was, it was helpful in understanding how, how that works and how we get discounts and, and what we're eligible for. So um, it was, it was interesting. Who, who was hanging on to this vehicle for two years, 400 <laughs> miles, but you know, to, to our advantage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I think it's great. So um, any other questions? Yes. All right. So could I get a motion to approve the request from the Department of Public Works to enter into a contract with Carl Chevrolet in the amount of $54,413.95 for the purchase of a 2022 Chevy Express van 3500 with Carbo cargo box body? So moved. S second. And that's unanimous. So thank you. Thank you very much. Now, DPW. No, Bill. How's everybody doing? Good. <clears throat> the the vehicle will come in very handy, by the way. Um, it's a good it's a good vehicle to have for what we're trying to do with it with the work. So thank you for that. Um, our first request here is for the uh, purchase orders. We bought this to you two weeks ago and tabled it to uh, get some more clarification on it, uh, which which I went through and separated the. Uh, purchase orders uh, below 10,000, and this was the request for over 10,000 on the blanket order. Um, so we're asking, uh, there was a spreadsheet attached to it, which I believe you have uh, to cover all those. Some of those items you may see on the list are below 10,000. It's only because there's a contract already in place. So the actual vendor is exceeding the 10,000. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. You know. Feel free to ask. Hey, Bill, on, on the list, Dave, if I'm making it right. um, it's two pages, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, so the first one is like pest control in mm -hmm. this dollar amount, and then it's listed again uh, on the second page. Am I missing something? So, like gutter painting. One, they're both for town buildings, too. That's... Yeah, and, and there's a couple like the gutter mm -hmm. cleaning repeats, I think, as well. It did repeat somehow. Um, I think it's just a repeat of the same exact. Is it? It looks like that. It's just well, yeah, because you know what? Uh, are we do? Are we are we double counting here, or are they? Yeah, you're right. That is not. So I didn't see that. Yeah, don't know because the, the dollar amount came out to the same. So yeah, I but why do we? It, it, why but do she's asking. Twice? Yeah, that's ABC exterminating. You see that the very first line on the first page and the first line on the second page. Yeah, I may just. Uh, in the gutter cleaning is the same same situation. Then we go to, yeah. then I think it's different. So I, I just wonder if we uh, in, inadvertently because these aren't separated counted. by by um, like highway or um, you know the uh, the Part railroad or, yeah or yeah. the sewer plant. These aren't the self sustaining right. funds. So I don't know why it did that, but it did do that. The um, the ABC exterminating was added after the fact. Um, it has been approved in a five-year contract already, but it was added but here. But this is the same five-year contract. So do we have we two five-year contracts? Line. Are we duplicating lines here by inadvertently? Is there is this a mistake in this? this, this in, the, in the PDF, there's a, I believe there's a mistake in the PDF, but I'm looking at the Excel spreadsheet itself and the overall total. And the Excel sheet doesn't have double counting for ABC or for... Um, the gutter cleaning it only has it once and the dollar uh, amount's the same on the spreadsheet it might, been, it might have been repeated on the on a pdf it might have been repeated as part of um when you create a pdf you're creating a pdf and then when you print it might have printed the top four lines instead of the top two lines the top two lines were the blanket purchase orders and then the the column headings and it might have printed it might have repeated at the top one through four which would have given you pest control and gutter cleaning but on the Excel sheet, the, the total is correct of, uh, so, you of, know, uh, Tiger, we have to add this up now because 
Is this because you, you, you know you what I'm asking? Is it thirty? I know what you're saying. Yep. What I'm asking is it so? Is it only seventeen five for the for ABC exterminating, and it's just a repeat down below? So they that it's it's not thirty eight thousand or you know whatever. It's only you're not doubling it. It's only seventeen five. It's it's only seventeen five for ABC and only thirty one thousand for Aladdin Services. That's so it's correct. just those two lines that were almost like a heading, like you said. In a that's, so, that's, if that's we were looking at the um, attachments we have, should we be looking at sixteen B um, as opposed to sixteen sixteen A? I'm just trying to what 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 should be the reference document? Should it be the sixteen B? Sixteen B. That's the agenda item. Sixteen B. Oh, yeah. like so, so there's sixteen A and sixteen B on the agenda. So I'm looking at sixteen B here as the as the total. Is that correct? Uh, rather than sixteen A, sixteen A is where the duplication, duplication is. But it looks like sixteen B is more accurate. Okay. Because, I just, yeah, I just see sixteen. Just I only have one. Oh, you only have one. <laughs> so basically, what we're saying is. Uh, there's one longer document that has the accounts broken out and the total is all the way at the bottom. Uh, but the, but to Amy's point, like at the bottom there, the, the pest control is broken out. Which, which, I mean, yeah. We have a bunch of attachments, so I'm not sure which attachment we're supposed to be focused on. Under 16 B. 16 B. Yeah, so up top, see up top, you've got the pest control once and then it's at, it's added. It's added at the bottom there. Yeah. I, in, in looking at the Excel sheet, it does ask for the rows to be repeated at top to be those rows that we talked about. So when you're asking for it to print, and then as it then it when it converts to a PDF, it does exactly that. It gives you the print model of it. Mm -hmm. We apologize for the confusion. Just adding them up, I'm almost there. I'm on page two. It adds up right. It does not repeat the 17,500 or 31,000. So when I add up everything, every line on the spreadsheet and do not count the 17,500 or 31 twice, the bottom line 368,450 is correct. So I don't know, it, like I said, I think it just printed it, it didn't calculate it. Yeah, 16B, there's no... I have 352. I must have added something. I have 352, 650 is... And that's the minus... It's negative plus 368. Eight, 450. Uh, doing that many numbers on an iPhone is... I know, it's not easy. ideal. I hate this is what I don't like to do. Fifteen eight. Did I miss something? Fifteen eight. Is there anything fifteen eight that I missed? Oh my god! All right. Um. The, as I mentioned, the Excel sheet totals correctly. Can you send the Excel sheet to us? Yeah. The, uh, there's just there's two yeah. Excel sheets. Okay. We're so sixteen. Uh, our our agenda attachment. There's there's two Excel sheets. The one has Blanket POs. Okay. Um, that would be six, 16, the Excel sheet. The second Excel sheet, which is 16B, does not appear yeah, this to duplicate. One. So I'm not sure what the first Excel sheet is because if it was actually totaling it, it would total to a, a higher number. So. To, to the tune is 17.5 and 31, it would be $48,000 more. Yeah, 16. I just added it all up here on my calculator and the, the, the total is correct. It did not duplicate the number 17.5 or 30. Well, mine didn't tie, so I must have missed something. Okay, so, so should we, do we have to like take out an attachment? Yeah, I mean, well, the, yeah, because you don't want yeah, you don't want an incorrect the attempt. Show, yeah. Well, I guess that's the question: is why? So, sixteen A. Why do we have sixteen A? Is there yeah, any? It's like there's duplications. You know, you just have sixteen. Okay. Sixteen A, and we only need one. 
yeah, so 16B is is the real, and Tiger just sent an email uh, with, I think he just forwarded it. So, so, yep. so Tiger, what you just sent us, that's the, that's the, uh, the shorter version of it. Okay. Correct. Got it. This is yeah. a lot easier to read. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, that, so somehow we just have to get the record straight. Yeah, so, um, so why don't we, can we, yeah, cause this doesn't look, does it look like 16A? Hold on. No, this is like longer. Yeah, there's no. Um... Yeah, there, so these there. don't tie up. This is, doesn't even look like the one that's on our tablets. So the, the order of the vendors is not the same as the one that's on our Oops. tablets. So I don't know why we have these on our tablets and not this one. I revised it yesterday when I sent you yesterday. Pardon? You didn't send it to me. You sent it to Tucker. Probably. Well, you sent it. I sent it to yeah. everybody. Yeah. So hey, I have a question just in terms of making this clean. Mm -hmm. uh, do you need this approved now? Does it, does it make a difference to you if we approved it in two weeks and then we could have a clean? Mm -hmm. um, so there's no confusion. And yeah. I'm not trying to make things difficult. I just want to make sure. Uh, I'm operating without POs right now. I can't really do anything. That's kind of slowing me down from doing work without a purchase order. We also have to get these guys paid too, right? Yeah, no, I have, that's why I asked question. Yeah. You know, so. so I think we need to then reference, how do we uh, reference this specific email that, because this is not on our tablets. This is just what Tiger just sent us all. You got it too, Amy? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, is there a way to add to we'll have to have somebody add this to the tablets, remove the other two items from it. And um, cause if we look at this one. Yeah, the totals are the same. The contingency is the same. It's just the way it's broken down. The, or, the yeah. orders. Yeah. Come, come to the, come to the, thanks. From, from a finance, when we get the document from the approval sign, we actually need it by vendor, not by project. Right, because so see a, this Excel yeah. spreadsheet type? Wait, no, wait, sorry. Well, I'm not sure. I've only seen the one where it broken down. Yeah, because see different projects, one, not vendors. That's what I had asked. Uh, so this one is by vendor. Let me okay, look. Okay, you pass control. Okay. Project by vendor. Yeah, this not, one shouldn't be. Yeah, because this yeah. one, I don't know why the one I'm looking at, which is probably 16 uh, B, like if you notice Aladdin's in there twice and the only reason they should be in there twice is if one goes to the sewer fund and one goes to the town buildings and this is both town buildings. So I don't know why this one's on our tablets. I guess one that we were going to admit and I revised it yesterday when I sent it back out. Okay, so you, so, but then it would have been 16 A. Well, no, it should have probably been 16 C. Okay. All right. So this one that we just were emailed, let me just double check it. Um, doesn't have a PO yet. No, the POs, I don't think for our purposes, the POs don't yeah. really matter. It's more finances, but for, but at least on this one and like for CV Longo, we have, um, there's three CV Longos, but um, one's for the railroad station, one's for the town buildings and one's for the sewer plant. So there, that's a good way to that's, do it. Right. Um, so as I look at this one, I don't see, I'm trying to think if I see any repeats that are not, like you don't want to see CB Longo in town buildings twice. Which, which version are you looking at? The one he emailed us, okay, so Tiger, just, just, just now. The, sec the one, the second yes. one? Yes, yes. Nothing on these tablets is what I would want to be looking right, at. Exactly. Okay. Um, so in modern plumbing, yep, this all looks, Northeast generator, town buildings, sewer plant. Property group, town building railroad. Um, so there's a couple of different ways you could look. It's either if you're going to do it between the three funds, you can do one PO with one amount for all three funds. I, I like so it this way. But no, it doesn't. You can do it yeah. either way, and you can do yeah. the separate if you have the three. Yeah. And then it's clean. Yeah, this one's clean. It shows you which you know um, the total. Bond. I mean, the totals are all over ten. That was the issue before yeah. when you you combine them all, but mm -hmm. it's helpful to know which ones are actually going to the general fund versus the sewer okay. and the railroad fund. So, um, 
And so we'll make sure that this is the one that goes into the. Yep. So the can record. we just make sure that this one gets on the tablets? The other two are removed. Perfect. Um, and in the PDF too. Just and just get rid of, yeah, get rid of the PDF and the Excel file on our. This, is, this Excel file, right? Yes. So how do we. Uh, Reference this in our meeting and the approval that we're using this one. Saras. Yeah, Mimi, the lawyer. Uh, I would make a motion to amend the attachment okay. to the item. Okay. That way you've approved the amendment. Okay and it becomes part of the record. Okay, perfect. And I'll just reference the time stamp of Tiger's email. Yeah, that would be a good one. Okay, all right. So are there any questions on the specific items before <laughs> I <laughs> go to amend the agenda? No, that no, looked pretty. Okay, don't look at that, look at that. Yeah, well, that is easy to I'm really big on maintenance. I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. maintenance, just like, Repairing yep. the truck for fifteen thousand yep. dollars a truck. Yeah, and I mean the, the other thing about this uh, new spreadsheet too, as this all shows some of the state contracts that are you know, WDB Mason suburban, yep. and, and uh, there's certain vendors that are all under state. Yeah, but these are all typical. This is doing business as a town, plumbing, it's yep. all yep. security. Yep. All right, so if I could get a motion to um, amend the attachments to our um, tablets, uh, removing items 16A and 16B from the tablets and inserting the email to the Board of Selectmen distribution bill, copying Bill, Tucker and Ann as of today at 942 from Tiger Man um, as the, uh, as the revised um, attachment to this agenda item. Deanna, can you, can you restate which? Remove 16A and A and B, just remove both of them because the, neither of them are fully correct. Yeah, but there, there are mul multiple attachments of it, 16 revised, 16 revised. Oh yeah, get rid of all of them then. Yeah. Just get rid of all, sorry, I didn't see you 16. Yeah. So get rid of all, all uh, Besides the memo, yeah. so remove. Okay, so remove um, cell spreadsheet sixteen revised twenty twenty four twenty five blank po. Remove sixteen a. Remove sixteen b. Right. And sixteen. Yeah, that's cool. there's so four. You're one, two, three, four. Yes. Yeah. So everything below the memo. Mm -hmm. Yes. in 16 needs to be removed from our tablets yes. and we will insert yes. the email from today from tiger with the attached excel spree spreadsheet and that'll so, be put on our so to be clear there's two not one at 942 one at 945 uh did you oh gosh tiger did you send two well i said i sent the pdf as well so i sent the excel and the pdf i like the excel let's I'm just keep the excel we don't excel. need excel okay good yep thank you all, all right, right so 942 a.m <laughs> Do I have a motion to approve the request from the Department of Public Works to approve? Um, did we vote on that, by the way? No, I didn't vote on that. Sorry. Do you all mo move to approve all those amendments to so the we'll, tablets? So we'll, second, second. Second. It's okay. unanimous. Sorry, guys. Thank you, Mimi. <laughs> okay. And then if I could get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works to approve a FY25 blanket purchase order for building repairs and supply services in the aggregate amount of $368,450 plus a contingency of $36,845 for a total of $405,295. So second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Good. Thank All right. You. Emergency repair. Um, so this is uh, for the highway department garage. Um, as Deanna, our first select woman, said the, she was on a couple weeks ago, got kind of warm. <laughs> it was a little warm in there. Um, package unit on the roof. Um, the compressor is burnt out on it and the board, which aren't board burnt out. It's 24 years old. It was original equipment. <clears throat> um, uh, M.A. Garmella went down there, uh, did all the diagnostics on it and uh, determined, well, the equipment is very old. The compressors are not available no more. So the only way to try to repair it would be to try to rig something to work. 
and we just didn't want to, it was very expensive just to anything it wouldn't guarantee yeah and, and it wouldn't guarantee it would work so i'm like okay no yeah. the good thing about it, it is a package unit which means that this is all contained in one unit on the roof so it's literally just taking a crane taking one off take a crane put the new unit in place and plug it in and it's it's good to go i don't have to worry about coils and air handlers and everything's all one unit um Price for this is thirty six thousand six hundred, which also includes the uh, day he spent down there going through it with his uh, two other guys trying to diagnose everything. Was uh, this on the list to get repaired at some point? No. So yes, it was. We had a couple AC. Yeah, this this uh, we had it at the annex. We had a problem. Annex has a new Vine. system which we had money for. Vine Cottage went down. Fire department went down. Yes. Uh, this went down and we had some work done on Lapland. Yeah, so I'm just saying, were these all in the queue to get repaired? Yeah, so what happened was we had them in the five-year capital and this year you actually proved funding for me to actually, I want to have a um, building uh, engineer study done on the building itself. Not only to look at the air conditioning equipment, but all the air handlers, all the pumps, everything. Now it's going on 20, 40, 25 years old. Most of this stuff's getting towards its end of its useful life. So what I had asked is um, I'm going to get an engineer firm to come out there, go through all the equipment um, because of, as you all know about the Freon changes and all this stuff there, it may change the type of equipment that has to be re go back in and as a replacement. So we want to have an engineer study done with a, uh, a budget on upgrading the equipment and what have you down. The so was there an engineering study in the budget for this fiscal year? For 25, I have it now. Not for any of the unit replacements because no. we were going to no, do. No, we we're going to do. We're going to do the study and then put in the budget for you know in November for next year. But the equipment beat us to the. Uh, you know. So it wasn't in the five-year capital plan. Then. In the five-year capital, about almost three hundred thousand dollars to do all these equipment on the highway. Being such a large number, we felt let's get an engineer study. Let's 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 understand all this equipment, the age of it, and what's going on with it, and because of the change of of Freons and, and because the equipment yeah. size is changing. Was the 300 over like two, you know, like, so we had the, the we have the study, study this year, year. Mm -hmm. how much was put in in the next couple of years for switching out? It was still like $279,000, I believe it was. In that FY26 was based, uh, or over five years? Uh, and you had to do it all. You do something like that all at once. Uh, you wouldn't want so to what is, it Was it in FY26 that we had that in? I'd have to go back and look okay. and see. The, um, the, um, Cause then we can take out just like, let's for our, yep. like what we're looking at. So we're, uh, oh, well, we, well, we we'll can revise take 30 it. out of whatever we thought. It'll be revised. Once we get engineer study, we get their budgets and stuff. Then we'll, 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 we'll revise that number. We did the uh, we did this original study back when we did the facility um, yeah, we capital the facilities do uh, facility do uh, it changes asset uh, management now um, but we did we did the yeah, and the capital forecast and they're not supporting no more so we decided not to continue with that it's been over ten years but that was uh, part of the original study that gave us these numbers for thirty years that we started using for our five year. They were simply but now they identified. Don't that anymore, so. They don't support that anymore. And we looked at it and we said, oh, let's just take what we have for the 30 year marker. Let's uh, look at these things more on a case by case basis because the buildings are so different and technology is changing. Even with the new air conditioning equipment now in 2035, it changes again. So, when is this study? Are we in the process of doing this study? I mean, myself, like you kind of need to. Yeah, and no, I made myself a note. That's one thing. Now that I um, have the big project behind me, I can dedicate more time to these other smaller projects. And uh, well, gonna, we, it's not in the work yet. It's not in the work yet. Yeah, so hopefully, uh, I'm going to make a couple of calls today. Mm -hmm. I made a note myself to call and uh, get somebody on board. And hopefully, in two weeks, I'll have a number, or if not four weeks, come back to you guys and uh, start working at these things. How quickly did you did you change out the AC? Okay. How quickly did you were you able to? It wasn't. It's the, it's the, the there we had ordered it. It was all about ordering equipment. We did find one uh, that was in stock. It was shipped. The, the uh, installer. Uh, I didn't talk to him today yet. He was expecting it early this week. Oh, so he's still looking at the yeah. yeah so no, we 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 impro we improvised down there a little bit. I talked to Mosey and he's like he's rigging up what we used to have in my house growing up with fans drawing from an air conditioning yeah. unit in another room down the hall yeah we're help. we're getting yeah. they're getting creative and uh, we got creative hopefully if it shows up today he'll uh do this do to it then uh schedule the crane for this week and get it down there and uh it's one day to take the one off and the one on
Yeah, is there, do they need a window unit or something down there in the other office? Or they, they don't, there's no, no the problem is I have that big moving call thing, but the, the uh, office space and all that stuff so uh, cookie cuttered up. I can't get uh, the air to move properly through the building. I'll just end up making a block of ice down there and it won't do anything. Okay. Uh, we did rig it up so that and there's that, that unit that failed, there's, it's this two stage unit. Second stage of it is a much smaller and it's timing. We kind of tricked it. So it's actually going on. We don't know how long it's going to last, but it's giving them um, some air. So it's keeping it into the mid seventies down there. I can't get it much core and I can't get the humidity down. So, so it's, uh, it's, 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 we're getting all we can out of it, put it that way. Well, let's, let's get this, let's get the study going. Yep. Yeah. No problem. That's what the plan is. So could I get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works Town Buildings to enter into a contract with M.A. Garamella in the amount of $30,600 to perform emergency HVAC repairs at the highway garage office? So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Sorry for all the confusion. <laughs> all right. Uh, lead system purchase. You guys are having fun today. Wow, you guys get back. It won't be <laughs> This one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. So this next item is uh, for the purchase of two units, two um, uh, leaf system. They, these are for these are tow behind units for our leaf pickup. Um, the purchase is with uh, Sanitary Equipment uh, Company. Um, it is under a source well contract, and it's for a combined total of one hundred ninety three thousand one hundred one dollars and eighty four cents. And the funds are available um, in several different uh, fiscal years. Um, and I'm, you know, Lou is there to answer any questions you might have. How long did these get these uh, systems last, Tiger? And how old were the ones we're replacing? Remember? Uh, I don't, that's okay. The ones we're replacing are night. This will be their nineteenth, uh, the nineteenth season for them. So two thousand five. Wow. Yeah, they live a hard life. Yeah. Let me tell you. When you say tow behind, they're not the in the in bed units. You're tow, you're towing them behind the truck. Yeah, they're tandem they, axle. Oh, and they blow into. Yeah, the, they blow, blow into, into the actual. Yeah. We have boxes yeah. in the truck. So. <clears throat> All right. All right. While we're on the subject, and the, the not to we don't need to discuss it today, but we should at some point discuss the uh, leaf pickup area and who is in and who is out and how we determine all that because that's you know it seems like we you know we've added equipment are we adding to the no. route that we for? So. it's a it's one it's one acre or less yeah. uh is the uh is the is the determination and that actually comes from the dep they feel that uh anything larger than one acre you can actually um compost in place uh in your yard but we do allow people to bring their uh, leaves from the larger um, zones to the leaf mulch site free of charge. Um, they just fill out a form and then hand it to their landscaper. Their landscaper brings it uh, when they're dumping. And then we do periodic checks to make sure that the, uh, the leaves are actually originating in the town. We catch probably three to five uh, vendors a year and they're suspended for one year from date of um when we when we catch them so Correction. if they're caught on the last day we i send them a letter saying you're suspended until that date the prior uh, the next year so we uh we, we have a very active um program to make sure that all the leaves that we receive are from actually are actually coming from residences within the town but but with the one an acre, it's where the one acre zoning is in place. Like I live in a two acre zone, but our house is one acre and it was grandfathered. It's, and so we don't get leaf pickup. So that's that I guess that's my question, Tiger. So if you're in a two acre zone, no matter what, even if you have a three quarter acre property, you're out. Right. That's correct. It so, would be very difficult for us to try to um determine each parcel and then maintain it as parcels are divided or what have you. So it's, it's based upon zoning. There's the current zoning map. If you'd like to amend it, that's okay. But What's the, so I guess, I, here, I guess here's another no. question. What's the furthest you have to travel to pick up leaves? What's the, what's the farthest sort of three quarter lot that you have to go pick up? Do you? One acre. One acre or one acre one or less. Yeah. Lou, you want to answer that? 
from where we sit, probably Hawks Hill area, yeah. uh, West Cross, East Cross. It's not that far from the uh, the compost site, but you know, from town, it seems yeah, rather that's far. Way. And on the other side of town, it's the Mill Road area. Yeah, Mill Road, Silver Mine. Yeah. Okay. Not the entirety of the, both roads, but par parts of each one. Because I, I always thought it was we did it more so to keep the drains unclogged than than you know I knew it was by size of the property and but I always envisioned it to be sort of the downtown area rather than going out of town. So that's yeah, it's pretty far. That's pretty far. You are, yeah. you are right. It is it is to make sure that residents don't blow them into the into the into a stream or a river because that the, when we dredged mead and mill specifically mill ninety percent of the uh, of what we dredged out was leaf litter um, from residents blowing it into uh, into the five mile down to uh, down to Mill Pond. Um, so you are right in that in the fact that one of the reasons we do it is to make sure that our drains are clear and that we're not clogging streams or uh, having them deposited into the ponds where we have to dredge them back out again. The problem was that when we came into the one acre zone, one acre zone or less is one acre zones sporadic in the town to what Lou and Danny had mentioned. So we do have situations where we're on Silvermine Road where we are off of Ponus and not concentrated in the downtown area. And there are very specific dates for when they end. So yeah. that's and, correct. We yeah we have a specific time frame when we start and from when we end we uh we post the leaves out prior, early. prior to start and then during we get we give ample notice as we're going, we still run into problems every year where people miss. Um, we keep very good track as to when we've finished a road. We just don't go to the road once. We'll make three, four trips to the road itself. And um, and on the last trip, we, uh, we close off that road off the list. And we invariably always have a resident who blows the leaves out behind the gentleman as they're, as they're finishing. Um, and then we ask them to clean the leaves up themselves at that point. All right. What do you guys what do you guys find harder, snow removal or leaf removal? Which would you rather do? Leaf see it's super uh labor intensive. Yeah. It's, so leaves are harder than oh, snow. Yeah, removal? absolutely. Wow. There's yeah, it's wow. especially when you get a lot of rain. Pretty it freezes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Leaves are a leaves are a day-to-day -day slog for a month or more, month or two months every day, five, six days a week, just you know, cleaning up leaves. So yeah, it, it is a it is a drain on the man, uh, the men and equipment at that point in time. It's very hard to maintain that that level of effort throughout. Well, hopefully, that's a message to our residents to be very patient when we see one of those trucks out there. Then you guys are working. So you and take also, the extent you can chop them up and leave them on your property, yep. it's better for the environment. Yep. So. All right. Okay, so if there are no further questions, if I could get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works to enter into a contract with Sanitary Equipment Company in the amount of $193,101.84 for the purchase of two new ODB extreme back leaf systems. So moved. Second. Unanimous, thank you. Thank All you. All right, Jim. material nice inventory, time. Tiger. So this is a, this is a, a continuation of a three-year contract that we've had with Has Compliance. We've been working with this company for um, several years. We had a we had a, a similar contract in 2021 that carried us um, through till now, through till uh, this the start of this fiscal year. What in an essence, what they do is they come out and inventory all the material that we have stored on site um, for the highway department, the parks department, the sewer department, town hall, the town hall annex, the police department, the fire department, Vine Cottage, Waveney House, Lapham Community Center, and the Waveney Pool. Um, and this is a, an OSHA requirement. First thing that OSHA does when they come to uh, any site is to ask for our safety data sheets. And the safety data sheet is exactly that. It tells you exactly what is contained, um, uh, what, that, what that chemical is, and how to treat it. God forbid it's swallowed. Uh, you know, it's ingested, it's it's uh, sprayed in someone's eyes, um, makes contact with the skin, things of that nature. So an emergency responder coming in for, for a chemical spill or a chemical burn will know exactly how to treat it and what to do. Um, so has compliance comes out, they do a complete inventory, and then they maintain that inventory for us for three years. Um, it's a, as I mentioned, it's a three-year annual contract for $7,446.60 
I added a 10% contingency of $750. And that's only because if they find out that this is based on how many how many units of, uh, of material we've had on site prior, if that number increases, obviously there's some additional effort in there. Or um, as we go through the year, if we continue to add materials, there's a little bit of an increased effort to make sure that uh, everything is, is um, in one place and is in one document. Um, they, as I mentioned, this is a, a continuation of a three-year contract that we had before. Before um, we had it split, we had done every department except for the fire department, and we added the fire department after. And when we did that, the combined total for the two was actually more than what um, they're asking for this year. So um, last time it was $8,044.75 combined between all the departments now. The contract is seven thousand four hundred forty-six dollars and sixty cents, and they've acknowledged the fact that um, it's a three-year contract. They've acknowledged the fact that it's subject to um, funding from the town bodies each year, and they understand that um, that that situation. They work with multiple municipalities, all of which have the exact same problem. Um, so they've they've acknowledged uh, that that concern or that 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 situation whereby if we weren't funded if this wasn't funded in subsequent years um the contract would not be renewed and the reason it's here is yes. it's a three it's a three-year contract so it goes the three years bring it's it over ten. Ten. That's a, the yeah. yeah yeah i mean we're being super like you know careful and wanting to be sure okay. yeah great okay all right so if i have uh if there are no further questions if i could get an approval for a request from the department of Public Works to enter into a contract with Has Compliance LLC in the amount of seven thousand four hundred forty-six dollars and sixty cents, plus a contingency of seven hundred fifty dollars, for a total of eight thousand one hundred ninety-six dollars and sixty cents as a part of a three-year contract. The project entails a material inventory and safety data sheet compilation as required by OSHA. So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, Tree Warden. So um, this is item twenty. Uh, Tiger. So this is a, 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 our um, one of our first bids for the, the new fiscal year, uh, July 12th to 2024. We went out to bid to our, our standard six individuals who are on our emergency call out list. We received four bids back. Um, the bids ranged in price from 28805 being the low bid from Hutchinson Tree Care to 42050 from Davy Tree. Um, it's for 18 separate locations in town. And I'll note that uh, one is at the Nature Center, uh, where we're, we're removing two dead ash trees. And then we have three separate locations in Irwin Park, where we're removing a, a dying Norway maple, a dead walnut tree, and a dead pine. And then in Waveney, we have three separate locations where we're removing a decayed tulip tree, a dead elm, and uh, we're pruning a beech tree that's uh, near the carriage barn stairs. Um, again, um, Hutchinson has done very nice work for us in the past, and we recommend going forward with this contract with Hutchinson Tree. And we have monies in this fiscal budget for the for this work. It's just I'm always amazed at how wide this this spread is on the uh, the bids. And I know I think you said a lot has to do with how busy they are and they have time to do it. But I mean that's you know that's a fifty percent. It's correct. You yeah. We um we analyze each bid. We analyze uh, each entry across. So uh, on our spreadsheet, we analyze not only the total, but then how everyone compares across the board. And um, at times we have the exact same consideration as to, you know, what is the difference between twenty eight and then forty two, um, and why. And I, as you mentioned, a lot of it is is uh is workload. Amazing. Mm -hmm. it shows that it's prudent to go out to multiple bidders. All right. And Tiger, most of these are in, in a lot of these are in parks and whatnot. But anybody, anybody that might be affected from a resident standpoint, you always do an outreach to let people know this is happening. The trees are marked, et cetera. That's correct. The tree warden talks to the adjacent property owner, um, and then the trees are posted. Uh, they're posted by statute, uh, state statute, for a ten day period. No, uh, no complaints after that that period. Um, then the tree can be removed. If it is, then he talks to the complainant um the concerned resident and then either schedules a tree hearing or or um addresses their concerns and either the the concern is dropped or uh or we move forward 
And if right. there was a, if there was a hearing, um, then he has to have the hearing at a public location and um, listen to that. Come forward with his his uh, answer, his final determination, and then the the complainant gets an additional time frame to further that, and then that would continue on into civil court at that point. We haven't had many that have gone the entire route to civil court. I, I can only remember one in, in uh, the past 20 years or so. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Questions? If not, if I could get a motion to approve a request from the tree warden to enter into a contract with Hutchinson Tree Care in the amount of $28,805 for the, the project entails the removal, pruning, and stump removal of various trees in town. So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. All right, emergency tree work. All right, so as uh, as as you may remember, um, last year we had to um, do a uh, purchase order based on what we uh, based on a number that we felt that we would um, necessarily utilize throughout the year, and the nature of the emergency work at times some vendors, uh, some contractors are, um, I would say, get luckier than others or unluckier than others and are called out more than than that. We uh, we found that in reviewing our our vendor totals from last year from fiscal 24 they ran, they ranged from $24,000 to 70,100 so um i appreciate you amending the uh the um the agenda and we'd be looking to at uh, at first writing a po for every vendor at $25,000 but then have the ability not to exceed $70,000 for one vendor and we can certainly come back at any time and tell you exactly how we're trending throughout the year. If you want to do that quarterly, semi-annually, we can certainly do that and tell you exactly how every vendor is is um, is uh, is tracking and how the uh, emergency work is being performed. Um, but at present, we're looking for a, a number uh, for each vendor starting at twenty five thousand dollars and not to exceed seventy thousand dollars without coming back to the board for uh, an, an additional appropriation. And monies are available in the tree budget. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If not, if I could get a motion to approve a request from the tree warden to approve a purchase order, not to exceed seventy thousand dollars each, with the following vendors to provide emergency tree work services: Olmstead Tree and Shrub, Darian Tree Care, Davy Tree, Hutchinson Tree Care, Mill River Tree, and Coeli Tree Care. So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And volunteer tax abatement. We have a few more that submitted between fire and EMS. Um, on the uh, EMS, we're looking at 20,000 in terms of, um, we had 10 that asked that brought their forms forward. On the fire, we have two, um, one from Stanford, one from New Canaan, and I'm looking for approval. Both both of their forms are in place. I have the appropriate docu documentation as our process stands right now um, to have these forms approved. If someone isn't in New Canaan, how does the abatement? So we ask for their bill to prove they actually have a bill from their entity. They send us a bill and we pay the say Stanford on this particular one, we'll pay Stanford directly. So it's against their bill. Do we get reciprocation from others if they're the opposite way? Have you seen any of that? I, do, I have not actually. That's a good question. I should ask to see if the tax collector gets it. Um, this is kind of odd if you're not a resident getting a property tax abatement. Works good for me. <laughs> I don't live the town in that, that I'm the chief. Do, do a number of towns not give tax abatement to their volunteers? I haven't. This is the first one I've been in that I've seen it. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so yeah. Bridgeport doesn't do it, and Wilton doesn't oh. give tax abatement either. No, it was well, yeah, to their volunteers. Well, like Bridgeport would be. Well, I know, but yeah. Wilton is more of a yeah, like Wilton's, community yeah, and yeah. doesn't. What about Norwalk? Yeah. Well, oh, well, I can ask Norwalk see what they do, but yep. Yeah, we so have I mean, quite. We, I think we talked about this the last time we discussed this, but we had thought of a number when we passed this ordinance of about sixty-five thousand, I think, total annually. Where are we now? With another twenty in there? Are we? We're still under the budget. With okay. there are still a few um, people that have not submitted their documentation. Okay. So, but we're still under. We're budget. Still under. Okay. Yep. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> 
Okay. Any other question? So if I could get a motion to approve a request for the abatement of real and or personal property taxes due July 1st, 2024, as per ordinance titled property tax abatement and other benefits for volunteer first responders approved by the town council on June 17th, 2020. So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, purchase orders for the finance department. Purchase orders. So I'll go through them. The These are uh, budgeted amounts in the operating budget all except for one. Um, New Canaan Historical Society, we budget 25000 a year to them. So we're looking to set the PO up to get their payment out to them. Um, the next three are related to state statute. The first one for New Canaan Country School, that is a state statute that says we have to provide for transportation to schools, regardless of them being public schools or not. They can be private schools. Um, In-town residents. Where most of the students are in town. So I don't, yeah, we don't have to provide for, yes, transportation support, yes. for students out of New Canaan to come to right. country school. But if, if, if it flips on both of these, if it flips where there's more students going in, we may not have to provide it. Oh, so if it's, oh, interesting. Predominantly, so like, predominantly. let me ask you this. So we have a, 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 a private school in town that may have a larger percentage of out of town um, students than in town students. There is one school that doesn't yes. put forward to that doesn't doesn't actually uh, submit for that reimbursement. Okay. There is a couple that they could do, but they actually so don't is, submit. Is the legislation because I didn't really focus on the details? Is the legislation such that if there's a larger percentage of out of town uh, students than in town students, do you still have to provide transportation for the in town students? I'll get clarification because okay. when I read the statute last week, it says for where it's majority of those students are in town. Okay. But I'll get clarification on the transportation. If they're not, do we still? Situation where it's second. Mm -hmm. If St. Luke's mm -hmm. doesn't, they, they have chosen not to. Um, the next two, New Canaan Country School and St. Luke's schools are for, it's another state statute where we have to pry, provide health services to the students. And again, what does that mean? What yeah, health? Um, mean? Nurses have to go out and do the things that we have school nurses for, um, for our public schools. We have to do the same service in the private schools. So is this like if someone's needing to have in home um uh, i don't know if it's that level i'll get the detail i know it's whatever services we provide at the school we have to have providing for the school nurse at st luke's and at yes at at, so we're paying for the school nurses at these private schools yes, yes. oh okay and they submit every year a documentation of how many students were served what was served um, or what was uh, done the work performed at the end of every year and then we uh, pay based on that and is it based on again you know as is It'd be, it will have to get some detail. But I'll get further detail, but it, it, the statute is just says, right. Students versus, you know, yeah. do we pay a percentage because not all the students are right. in does town it, or, the host, uh, the or do we just pay the full bill? I think we pay the full, but so long as our percentage is higher that the uh, residents, there's more residents using the school versus mm -hmm. uh, non-residents, but I'll get clarification. Yeah. What percentages are those? I mean, when you say more, I mean, what if it's like, 30% from our town and 10% from a bunch of other towns. I mean, so, so is it 51%, you know, that, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious. I'll so get it, that. Yeah. I'll get that clarification. It's obviously what the law is, but I'm curious to know. Yep. Yeah. And I guess that the premise is that, you know, as a community, you know, right. we're supposed to provide health services for kids. The right. question is where should that expense fall? Yep. Um, O'Connor Davies is our uh, external auditor. So uh, we're moving forward to that to set up a PO, a PO for them. Uh, Tyler Technologies is our software system, our Munis. Um, that's their annual fee for all the different modules that we use. CCM is the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities that the town belongs to. It's a good resource for the town. So we enroll in that, uh, uh, not registrate, membership every year. Which is uh, more expansive than Westcon, agree? Yes, yeah, yeah. For getting like, uh, when we're looking at things. Surveys. To get, or, yeah, survey yeah. data. Yeah. Like, it's, it's helpful that way. And Pummel and Conley, there's um, there's three different services that we use them. This is bond council. So it's going out for bonds, doing our authorizations, the BOE lease um, that we do, their technology lease. Um, so part of it is coming out of the general fund and part of it's coming out of whenever we bond, we take the proceeds from the um, premium to cover it. Yeah, because bond council should be an expense associated with issuing the bonds. Yes. And and we just have that one piece where we issue the lease for the Board of Ed technology lease. Right. They handle that, excuse me, they handle that process as well. Okay. 
So, and I have a question, the, the uh, Tyler uh, Munis contract, um, will this uh, also take care of the potential contract module that we might wanna add? This will be an addition that's below the, it's 13, it's gonna add a $1,300 a year going forward outside of the- So, uh, so it'll- for this one, it's the contracts is not included in this one. Okay, so it you'd have, have to, to come back, or I'd have to approve another thirteen. Uh, you approved it. Yep. You approved that one. Okay, yeah, great. great. It was under ten. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, any other questions? Well, just so, so those outstanding questions we have. Do you, I mean, do you want to table any of this stuff before, or do you want to just approve it based on the questions that we've asked? Because mm. we still have some outstanding. Yep. So I mean, obviously, the last O'Connor Davies, Tyler, CCM, Pullman, those are all easy. Yeah. You know, those are. But the, the top four were the ones that we are actually historical yeah, sites. Yeah, just the, the school the ones. School and they're not schools. they're not immediate because they're not paid till the end of the year. So it's not I can get those okay, answers. I was just getting the, the PO up front. I can yeah. definitely get those answers. The other question I would have is can we bill back? So like let's say we have a school that, you know, we're providing healthcare service and you know, it's a predominantly out of town um, yeah, should it be our expense and should it be really could we bill back to whatever municipality they're from? Um, for their a percentage call. of the of the health insurance. Yep, uh, bring fee. that back. Same thing. Yeah, so it's worth looking at. Yeah, yep. and maybe do I'll have a board of ed, um, Shalon or someone come forward mm -hmm. on that because they make the determination on on their statistics of how that comes in and they send the bill to us. Oh, they so, do. Yeah, oh, so it might be yeah. I'll bring him in with the statute. I have the statutes and they're okay. they're very straightforward on it, but they would know. So I'll have Shalon come in in the next one. Okay, that's great. That would be a better resource. Yeah, maybe have him um, when he comes in. We can make sure he uh, attaches to the to the the tablets, um, the, the two statutes, the yeah. statutes. Yep. So we can yep. take we can read those. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Okay. Any other questions? So we take only all of this? Or? No, just no, the just three. Just the the okay, three great. schools. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, <clears throat> Could I get a motion to approve a request from the finance department to approve the following FY25 purchase orders? Uh, first, New Canaan Historical Society for 25,000, O'Connor Davies LLP for 60,000, Tyler Technologies for 50,305, CCM for 12,552, and Pullman and Comley for six, 60,000. So moved. So moved. Oh, second. Unanimous, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, next, Cheryl and Maria. Good morning. We are here, or I am here, to ask to have Maria Coplet appointed as the town engineer. What we had found out was that when she had started, she was not appointed, and by charter, she needs to be, so we would like to have her appointed. And it's at an indefinite period of time. So when she's appointed, okay. she um, serves at the pleasure of the Board of Selectmen and is in that appointment until she leaves us, which will not happen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's make this happen. Okay. Any questions? I just, uh, we have an opportunity with Maria here to thank her for everything she's done since she arrived. And what an amazing, you know, every, everywhere I turn, you're, you're in the middle of something. So thank you for everything you're doing for our town. And you add so much value and you're always happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a pleasure to work for the town of New Canaan and I am greatly enjoying my job. So I am happy that we're able to, uh, I guess, solidify this. Yes. <laughs> have you after five years. <laughs> All right. So if there are no questions, I would ask for a motion to approve a request from the human resources director to appoint Maria Coplet as town engineer. So I moved enthusiastically. <laughs> Second, enthusiastically. <laughs> it's unanimous. Enthusiastically. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, historical review committee. Um, I'm hoping you both had the opportunity to reach out to Alan Badanes mm -hmm. uh, before today's meeting um, and would like to have him appointed to uh, join the uh, Historical Review Committee. He is replacing uh, someone who um, resigned from the commission mm -hmm. and we need, we need to fulfill the spot. So moved. Second. 
It's unanimous. Thank you very much. And thank Alan in advance for his service. Yes. Okay. And then moving on to legal bills. You could take a look at those. And if you have any questions. New year. New year. So if you don't have any questions, if I could get a motion to approve the legal fees. So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And then um, just a review of the contracts. Excuse me, item 26. We removed it. Yeah. 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 Um, takes a lot to run the town. Mm. Yeah. feels like every day all I have is things to sign. <laughs> well, I was amazed at, at like every single one of these. He took down to $115 for, you know, you're signing every single one. It's pretty impressive. So never saw this level of detail. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. A lot of, that's a lot of POs. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of POs. It's, and it's busy now just because it's the beginning of the year. Right. So yeah. there's a lot of setting up of those POs. So. All right. All right. Any, so I have a motion and a, and a, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Uh, second. Oh, we don't have to move. No, Sorry. These are under 10. Yeah. These are under 10. Sorry. Right. All right. And uh, selecting comments. Anyone have anything they want to um, say? So we're going to be looking just for the community's benefit. We're going to be looking to move our meeting for September uh third? sorry it's the it's day after it's Labor the day? tuesday after september 3rd september 3rd mm -hmm. so we'll be looking to move that uh probably to the next tuesday but um stay tuned but just for people's heads up, heads up we we may be moving that and I, because if it's 30 days or i guess if we do it with uh more than 30 days we don't have to do a special meeting it can be a regular agenda that we would normally be able to edit if it's it. over 30 days so um we'll try to get that get that done quickly you got time. We got time. Okay. <laughs> it's a shout out to Laura Budd because the, the just another successful sidewalk sale oh, was an amazing crowd that showed up and uh, hopefully all the merchants appreciated all the work that went into organizing it. And obviously the highway department cleaned up right at five o'clock. They swept the street. It was back to normal. Uh, so nice yeah. job by Laura and her and her team. And lastly, just congratulations to Dion. Her oh. daughter got married. Yeah. Thank Big you. deal. Big deal. Big deal. You didn't miss much at work. You're here and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> crazy very mother crazy. of the bride but congratulations thank you very much Happy we're years. very excited and she married even the canaan young man so oh, there you go we're not we don't have to go far for holidays That's all right <laughs> thanks um if i could get a motion to adjourn so moved. second it's unanimous thank you all right all right so Ten do you guys minutes. have any preference or should i just move it to the following tuesday so we'll get we'll do two back to back then it'll be is that all right